Hello, welcome to GRE Math Subject Test Video 6. Our goal is to provide avenues for solving problems on a test that will significantly save you time in the test. Today we'll be looking into a specific problem in probability, but before we do that, I'd like to remind viewers of some fundamentals of the normal distribution. So recall that a random variable is normally distributed with mean mu and standard deviation sigma if it follows a particular distribution pattern. There's an explicit formula for this distribution, but to give a diagram, the distribution looks like a bell curve. So a typical example of something that's normally distributed is final exam grades in a course with a lot of students in it. Now, one of the beauties of the normal distribution is there's a general uh, rule of thumb for calculating probabilities um, in intervals around the mean for this distribution. And these intervals are based on how far off you are from the mean in terms of the standard deviation. So here I've marked the points in which the distribution is one standard deviation away from the mean, two standard deviations, and three standard deviations. And the rule of thumb is the following. It's called the 68.95.99.7 rule, and it says that the probability that x is within one standard deviation of the mean is about 68% or 0 0.68. The probability that X is at most two standard deviations from the mean is about 0 0.95. And the probability that X is three stand standard deviations, within three standard deviations of the mean is roughly 0 0.997, right? So the probability being within this part of the distribution is about 68%. Within this part, two standard deviations is 95, and within three standard deviations is 99.7. So we'll see an example of a problem that is similar to problems that have appeared both on this actual subject test and on practice tests where using the normal distribution together with a well-known theorem can actually help simplify the calculation of the problem. The problem is the following. Suppose a fair coin is tossed 150 times. What is the probability that heads appears at least 63 times, sorry, at most 63 times? Okay, so one way one could go about this problem is to get an explicit formula for the probability and then try to estimate that particular exact formula. So how would we get an exact formula? Well, first, let's count the number of outcomes that are possible in this experiment. So a fair coin has two sides, we flip it 150 times, and so the total number of possible outcomes is 2 to the 150th power. Okay, now how about a formula for the exact thing that we're interested in? The outcomes in which we have at most 63 heads. Okay, so this is the sum total of the number of outcomes where there's exactly zero heads, number of outcomes where there's exactly one head, number of outcomes where there's exactly two heads, etc., up to 63 heads. Okay, the number of ways in which we can obtain exactly k heads by flipping 150 coins is 150 choose k, the binomial coefficient 150 choose k. So the number of ways of selecting k items from 150 so we'd be selecting k heads out of the 150 tossed coins. Okay, so then, as a consequence, the number of ways of flipping at most 63 heads is the sum of all the binomial coefficients from 150 to 0 all the way to 150 to 63. And so our probability is this exact number right here. 150 to 0 plus 150 to 1 all the way to 150 to 63 divided by 2 to the 150th power. Okay, so this is actually the probability we're interested in. But there's a little bit of a problem here. The problem is, how do we estimate this number? 
If you're familiar with it, you could try to use Sterling's formula to estimate the numerator, but that involves some transcendental numbers and it'll get really complicated really fast. So what we'll do is instead, think about this problem from a probabilistic point of view and use a particular celebrated theorem called the central limit theorem to approximate this problem by one involving the normal distribution and then use our rule of thumb that we talked about just previously. Okay, so before we apply the central limit theorem, let's think about the random variable we have in question. So we construct a random variable x, that's the number of heads flipped. Then x is a binomial, is binomially distributed, where we have n trials, where n is 150, and probability 1 half. The probability of flipping a heads is 1 half because the coin toss is fair. The reason this is binomially distributed is because we have two choices for every single trial and there's an exact probability that's constant of the outcome of each of them. Okay, so any binomially uh, distributed random variable has expectation NP and variance NP1 minus P. NP in this case is 75 and NP1 minus P is 37.5 because P is a half, so one minus P is one half as well. And 37.5 is really close to six. Um, it's about 6.1 because, oh sorry, the square root of, of that is six, roughly, because 36 has square root six. And so the mean of this distribution is 75 and the, var the variance is 37.5, meaning the standard deviation is roughly 6. All right, so the central limit theorem tells us the following. It tells us that x can be approximated by a normal distribution with mean mu, the same mean we had, and standard deviation sigma, the sigma we had above. So the problem of estimating the probability that we have at most 63 heads can be done by using the normal distribution instead. And we have our rule of thumb to approach that problem. Before I continue, one question you might have is, well, there are lots of different random variables besides the binomial one, right? Do I need to recognize every possible random variable and all of their expected values and variances? In my experience on the GRE mass subject test, the binomial distribution tends to be the one that's asked about the most by far in terms of using the central limit theorem and the normal distribution to approximate it. Okay. Okay, so let's go ahead and use the central limit theorem to approach our problem then. Okay, so we're interested in the probability that we have at most 63 heads. And if you look at this picture, now we have this normal distribution approximating what we're interested in. And so the region we're interested in calculating the probability of is this region right here shaded in green. Okay, the mean of our random variable is 75. Right? And the standard deviation is roughly 6. 63 is 12 off from 75, so that's roughly twice the standard deviation. Right? And so we're interested in the probability that we are in this region, which is everything to this side of two standard deviations away from the mean. But by our rule of thumb, we actually have an estimate for the probability of this blue region here, right? The blue region here in the center is everything within two standard deviations of the mean. So the probability of this is roughly 0 0.95. Okay, great. That means everything outside of it, these two sides, has probability roughly 0 0.05. And so half of that is exactly the probability we're interested in which is 0 0.025.
Great, so again, to recap, we're interested in the probability that x is at most 30, 63. This is one half the probability that we are at least two standard deviations away from the mean. That's this green region plus this corresponding region over here. And we can figure that out by subtracting off this bulk of the distribution here, which is everything within two standard deviations of the mean. And we know that what that is by our rule of thumb. And so we get a total approximation of roughly 0 0.025. All right, so this is a fantastic tool to use because it saves quite a bit of time. All we did to calculate this was recognize how far 63 is off from the mean, right? Remembered our formulas for the expectation and variance of a binomial distribution, and then went ahead and calculated the corresponding things that we needed. This is a really great tool to use on the subject test that can give you an immediate point if recognized on the test. I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, please click the like button below. If you're interested in seeing more videos of this type, please subscribe to this channel.